Welcome to Church Online. If you are new, my name is Adam Burton, and I have the privilege of serving as the pastor at Central Baptist Church. We are physically located right on the banks of the Ohio River in Maysville, Kentucky, but we are coming to you right now from wherever you are to unite together, both in spirit and in truth, to worship Jesus. Uh, thank you for joining us in worship today. Whether you are one of our regulars or you are just uh, happen upon us for the very first time, it means so much to me that you would join together with our church to worship today. We are live right now on all of our digital channels. That is our website at cbcmaysville.com on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. We are everywhere. Please, if you have not yet liked and followed all of our social media channels, you can do so at CBC Maysville. Just search for CBC Maysville and you will find us. One thing in particular, I want to make sure that you have joined our Facebook group. Now, this is different than our Facebook page. Go to facebook.com slash groups slash CBC Mason. There I go live uh, uh, every now and then. We post prayer requests and we engage with each other in our faith while we are kind of disrupted right now. We are in the second week of our two-week uh, virtual only uh, time because of the COVID pandemic. We will reevaluate how things are with our congregation on as to whether or not we're going to continue to stay virtual or go back to in-person. So uh, stay tuned uh, for, uh, for that decision to be made closely. But in the meantime, we are going to worship the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength right now. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for all that you are, for all that you have done for us. God, I thank you for each person that is watching this service right now. Wherever they are, whatever they are doing, God, I pray that you would just uh, free ourselves from any distraction that may hinder us from hearing your word, from the Spirit moving in us. God, we pray that our worship brings you honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's worship him. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry. Drink of the water, come and thirst no more. Come all you sinners, come find his mercy, come to the table he will satisfy. Taste of His goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live forever. all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting there with open arms. For God so loved the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well, I'm walking in freedom. For God so loved, God so loved the world. Praise God. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, praise Him, for the wonders of His love. Praise God, praise God, from whom all blessings flow. 
have seen its flow. Praise Him, praise Him for the wonders of His love, His amazing love. For God so loved the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save us. For God so loved the world that us, his one and only Son to save us. Whoever believes in Him will live forever. The power of hell forever defeated. Now it is well. I'm walking in freedom for God so loved. God so loved the world. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting, God so loved the world. You know, we are in uh, this season of Thanksgiving. Now, I don't know about you, but I've eaten my share of turkey and dressing so far. But Thanksgiving is a time for us uh, to give thanks. And we give thanks with our, our hearts. And, and we are thankful to God for who He is, for what He has done. I'm thankful for Central Baptist Church, a church that means so much to me. I love the people that that, uh, that are uh, connected to this church deeply. And I'm, a, I'm just so grateful to God that, that he allows me to serve this, this, uh, uh, this body of, of believers. I am thankful for the work that God allows us to do as a church, to, uh, to, to help those with their physical needs, to uh, take the gospel to the ends of, of the earth. But another way that we express our thankfulness is through giving and uh, giving of our tithes and offerings. We are called by God uh, to, to give sacrificially so that we can see, we can fulfill the mission that he has called us to do. Thank you so much for those of you who are our regular givers. Uh, we could not do what we do without your support. If you're not a regular giver, would you consider starting to give regularly to support the work of Central Baptist? If you go to our website, go to cbcmaysville.com and then click on that Give tab. There you can find out more about the money that, that we bring in and how we send it out uh, to uh, ministries around the world. And there you can also find the different ways that you can give. Uh, it, online is the easiest way, but you can, uh, if you're local, give in person as well as through the mail. College basketball is back. <laughs> this past week, we saw the, the season kick off. And if you are in Kentucky and if you are a University of Kentucky fan, I hope you are like me and are excited for this upcoming season. But watching the game this past week, I noticed that Rupp Arena looked very different than it normally does because of the, the COVID pandemic. Only 3,000 fans were allowed into the massive Rupp Arena to watch the Wildcats play Moorhead State. And watching it, it just seemed really odd. It just seemed that this arena was almost empty for normally. Some 20,000 wild and screaming and crazy fans would pack to the rafters of this storied arena to watch Kentucky play basketball. But I've missed 
watching basketball, whether or not people are allowed into Rupp Arena or not. And, and you might say that many of us in the state of Kentucky have a hunger for basketball. You know, if you were to ask my daughter, what does mommy and daddy watch on TV? Her answer is basketball. But I want you to picture that a, a field out in the open overlooking a, a lake where where some 20,000 people were, were gathered to witness an amazing event. And no, it's not basketball or a concert, but to hear someone teach. Well, in today's passage, we're, we're going to look at two spectacular events that Jesus uses to show that he is the Messiah, that he is the Son of God who provides eternal life. You know, up until this point, uh, Jesus had, had drawn quite a, a following after he had performed several signs and, and miracles and healing the sick. And these people, they were excited to hear Jesus speak, but, but there was a problem that, that had to be overcome. You see, they were were coming, these 20,000 people. The Scripture tells us 5,000 men, and so we can estimate based on the women and children with them that in the 20,000 ballpark that, that they were coming, but they were, they were hungry. They needed something to, to eat. And, and so, um, there, the, 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 you know, there, there weren't any restaurants that you could, could run to. You couldn't go down to McDonald's and get a Happy Meal for your young one or, or the street vendors out there to, to sell overpriced hot dogs and popcorn. No, these people were, were coming to hear Jesus speak, but they had no food to eat. So what does, what does Jesus do? Well, in today's passage, in our, as we walk through this message, we're going to look at three different points as to, one, what Jesus does to meet needs, uh, but also what we must do in response. So first, we see that Jesus meets our physical needs. He meets our physical needs in the first 15 verses of John chapter 6, we, we see the, this uh, pretty uh, well-known account in Scripture where Jesus is feeding the 5,000. And, and so, um, as, we've, uh, um, as uh, the, this crowd is gathering, Jesus asks one of his disciples, a, a disciple named Philip, and, and he says, where are we going to go buy bread that these people could, could eat? Now, John, the author of this gospel, tells us that Jesus isn't asking this because he, he didn't know what was going to happen. No, he knew what he was going to do. But he asked Philip this question uh, in, order to, in order to test him. Now, uh, we, uh, and one of the other uh, uh, apostles, one of the other disciples was, um, was uh, uh, named Andrew. He was Simon Peter's brother. And he, he comes in and, and he says, look, I, I found a boy and, and he's got five barley loaves of bread and two fish. And he said, but, but this is so small that it's not going to be able to feed near of what we, what we need. And, and based on my, my study of this, the, the, the bread and the, the fish that, that are there is not uh, the kind of bread that most people would eat. The, you know, the best bread is made out of, out of wheat. And, uh, and the fish here, we're not talking mahi-mahi or, or some a special salmon or something that you might get at, at a restaurant. No, this is, um, in, in fact, more like a, a pickled fish. Now, I don't know about you. Maybe that's your kind of thing, but that does not sound very appealing to, to me. And so we see that the, the, the food here, and, and it, it gives us this indication that the people that are gathered there are not the elite of society. No, these are, are the poor people, and they had great physical needs. And so what does, what does Jesus do? All right, we see that, uh, that, that the, the disciples are, are, are doubting what they're able to do. might say, let's just send them home, let them eat, and come back, and and no, Jesus says, no, we're not going to do that. And we think, well, how are we? we don't even have the, the money. It says 200 denarii, which was uh, bet the wages for an entire year for a person. And it's going to cost way too much money to, to feed them. But what does Jesus do? Verse 10, Jesus says, it said, says, have the people sit down. Now, there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. And here, verse 11, then Jesus takes the loaves, and, and, he, and he 
and he gives thanks, and he distributes them to those who were seated, as well as the fish. And we know that this is a great miracle that has taken place for the, the fish and the loaves kept them multiplying and they were able to not just feed everyone, but everybody was able to eat until they were full. So we can see in this, uh, in just in these few verses, one is that Jesus gave thanks. Now, Jesus is God, right? He is the one who, who gives all things, the creator of all things, in control of all things, but yet he gives thanks. Who does he thank? He thanks his Father. And it's a good principle for us to be thankful in all things, in all circumstances. We are in this season of thanksgiving, and it is a great time for us to be thankful. We should be thankful for the provisions, the food that he has provided for us, for the family that he has given us, for the, the job, the career, even when we may not like it at times, that God has provided for us. But we also see that Jesus didn't just give them what they needed. No, he gave them in abundance. They ate as much as they, they wanted, and there was food that was even left over. And so we, we see this great miracle take place and these 5,000 men, probably 20,000 total people see what Jesus has done and, and they get excited because they believe that he is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. And, and what do they do? Well, they, they seek to, to take Jesus and to make him a king. Now, we can see a great... Um, um, uh, kind of connection here in John chapter 6 with what took place in, in Exodus with the Israelites and, and Moses leading them into the promised land. We see that both of these accounts occur during, during Passover, the time where they are to give thanks for God providing for them. And so they were able to, uh, to, to give thanks in the Old Testament, um, in the wilderness, they were, were, were giving thanks. In the New Testament, they are giving uh, thanks. And it is uh, a, an important uh, festival and holiday in the Jewish tradition. But we also see that, that God miraculously fed the people, both in the Old Testament and here in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, they were out. They had nothing to eat. They were wandering in the wilderness. And what does God do? He brings manna to rain down from heaven. And here in the New Testament, Jesus himself multiplies the bread and the fish. We also see that both of these events was a test. For in the Old Testament, the Exodus, God tested the Israelites to see if they would depend on God for even the simplest needs of food. And in the New Testament here, in John 6, we see that, that Jesus was testing Philip to see whether or not he truly believed that Jesus had the power to feed these people. And so, um, and we also see in these two accounts that, that both the people grumbled throughout the Exodus. Although God's provision was with them at all times, he was always with them. They complained time and time again. And in the New Testament, these people that followed Jesus complained and complained and complained. But, these, but the Israelites, after seeing this miracle, they want to make Jesus their king. They were desperate for a king, for a, a political hero that they could look to, to 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 make Israel great again. For it had been generations since Israel was a, a mighty kingdom. For years, they had been under a brutal Roman rule. And, and so they wanted Jesus to be their hero, to fight for them, to, to be, to, to, to take their battles and to, and to overcome the, the, the oppression that they are, were feeling at this moment. And, and what does Jesus do? No, he, he withdraws. He, he leaves. He resists their, their, uh, pleadings for him to, to become a, a great king. Now, Jesus is, is the king, but Jesus came to do something far greater than making Israel great. No, and it didn't come by by fighting. It didn't come through 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 overcoming this um, 
um, um, uh, the, 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 the challenges that they face. No, no, Jesus, his power comes through, through sacrificing. So Jesus, he withdraws from this crowd. And that brings us to our second point is, is that Jesus is in control of creation. Jesus controls creation. Now, why does Jesus go off? He goes to the mountain by him, himself. He leaves his disciples, leaves everybody, and he goes off by himself. Now, what does he do there? Well, we don't have the details here in this passage. Does he go in and, and rest? Probably. Can imagine how taxing that, that the ministry was for Jesus. While although he was God, he was fully human. So Jesus himself needed to rest just like you and I need to. Did he go in to pray? I think so. Jesus was one with his father. So he was in constant communication with God. And so while Jesus is is there, he is in the mountain by himself. His disciples leave as well on a, on a boat, and they're on the Sea of Galilee. Now, the thing about the Sea of Galilee or Sea of Tiberias is that storms can come up out of nowhere, and they are violent storms, and they could uh, capsize boats, they can destroy ships, they can even take lives. And so during this time, a great storm comes up, and, and the disciples are scared, and and as the, the, the waves are tossing and turning them, they look and they see a man walking on water coming toward them. They know that this man is Jesus. For Jesus himself says, it is I. Now, and now were they, were they scared because uh, they seen a man walking on water or because they're afraid of, of losing their life? I think it's probably both. Right? Because... Normal people don't walk on water, but Jesus is no normal person for he is God and he controls the seas and he controls everything in creation. Look here, it said in, in verse 21, they being the disciples were, were glad to take him into the boat and immediately the boat was at the land to which they were going. I think, why did did Jesus do this, uh, this perform this, this great sign for their disciples? Well, we know that, that the disciples were still struggling with the belief that Jesus was the Messiah sent to come to take away the sins of, of the world. Yes, they believed enough to, to follow him and they saw great miracles done. But even in this test with Philip and I'm sure the other disciples were guilty of unbelief as well. They, they still did not completely trust in Jesus to provide for them. So Jesus does this sign just for the disciples so that they may not, so that they may believe. So Jesus, he is, he provides for physical needs. He, he also controls creation. But lastly, we see that Jesus gives life. He is the life giver. So in verses 22 through, through 40, we see that Jesus, um, that the crowd it was, was still there on the, the side of the Sea of, of Galilee. And they, they noticed that, that Jesus and, and the disciples were gone, but they weren't yet ready to, to leave. And they still wanted to make Jesus king. And they, they wanted, to, uh, they wanted to, to get more of what Jesus had to offer them. And so what did they do? They, they, they go on a mission to, to find Jesus, and they are now in, uh, Jesus and his disciples are in the town of Capernaum. We've seen that several times in our uh, study through the Gospel of John. And so as they are there, they find Jesus. They seek him out and his disciples, and, and they come back to, to Jesus. And, and then they, they said here in 30, verse 25, it says, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus said this, and we know whenever we see it truly, truly, we need to pay attention. So it says, truly, truly, I say to you, you are seeking me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For in on him, God the Father has set his seal. 
So the crowd thought by, by coming back to, to Jesus that, that, he would, that he would give them more, that he would help them more with their physical needs. If they were poor, maybe that, that, that he would provide for them not just their, their food, but maybe even some type of, of shelter or clothing. And, and we see that they had their eyes set so short of what Jesus came to offer. Jesus tells him, look, you're just coming to me because you want to get your bellies filled again, but I can give you so much more than that. And he tells him, he says, look, if you were to just open your eyes that you would see that these signs, these miracles that I am doing point to me as a being, the Messiah, the Savior that the prophets have foretold about that comes to, to take away your sins. So what the crowd does, they, they believe Jesus and his words, and they, they ask, what do we need to do in order to earn this eternal food that you talk about? And this is where the, the, the Jewish system of the law, everything that they had been taught and everything that the world teaches us as well, falls short and is wrong. Because... It is not work that you must do to receive eternal food for us, eternal salvation, the blessings of God. We don't earn God's favor. But rather, Jesus tells them that it is to believe in Jesus. That's the only thing, is to believe in him who he, who God has sent. That's why Jesus came and he performed these miracles. Yes, he he provided for physical needs. He helped the sick, but it wasn't it wasn't for those because there were other people that were hungry. There were others that needed healing that Jesus did not do so. But he specifically at these specific points and times to these specific people, he performed these signs and miracles so that they might believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So what does this look like for us in 2020, closing in on this uh, crazy year that we have, we have faced? My encouragement to, to you, my own conviction for myself, is, is that we need to look for the signs at where God is working. We need to look to see, look around us, open our eyes because it is so easy for us to get tunnel vision that we can only see what is right in front of us. And and usually it's with with a selfish lens that, God, you're just not doing what I want you to do. And and I find so many times in in my own life, and I'm sure probably in the lives of of several of you that are watching here, is is that we are very quick to take credit for the good things in our lives. And we're also very quick to blame God for when bad things happen. And honestly, it should be the exact reverse. We need to give thanks to God in all things, recognizing that even if we do things in our um, through our own work, through our own effort, that it is not because of us, but it is because of God. And most of the time, when bad things do happen to us, it's a, a sin issue in our own life, or maybe just a result of the sinful fallen world that we that we live in. So we need to to look for these signs, to see where God is working. And if we just open our eyes, you will see them. Back in, in biblical times, it was, it was the miracles, the signs, and the wonders. And, and now for, for most of us, we, we see God's work, one, through the written word of God, but also through his provision. I mean, I can count numerous times in my own life where I know that God is working. I know that God has provided, whether it it, it be financially, or whether it be um, with food or shelter or, or, or working family matters out or 
or, or providing a, a, a career for me. We need to open our eyes to see God's signs. But we also need to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. When we see it, we need to believe it. Jesus said that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have what? Should have eternal life. And I will raise him up on the last day. If you are watching and you have not yet trusted Jesus for your salvation, friend, today may it be the day of your that you trust in Christ. It says everyone who looks on him and believes will have eternal life. Look, every day I look and, and I read the, the COVID statistics, and every day hundreds and thousands of people are dying attributed to, to COVID-19. In some ways, there's statistics. We, we look at them, you know, uh, for our, our city, our, our state, nation, the world, but, but they are people. They are souls that are leaving this earth. Some are going to heaven, those who have trusted in Christ for their salvation, and those that have not, sadly. And oh, so, um, so, uh, so sadly are, are now spending eternity in hell apart from God. But you still have time. You still have time to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. But we also must trust in Jesus to provide for you. Trust in Jesus to provide for your, your finances, to provide for your family relationships, to provide your relationships maybe with friends that are strained, that, that are broken, or to provide in your work or provide over your, your addiction. See, I know many of us, especially those of us that have been saved, look, we, we believe in Jesus to, to save us for eternity, but yet we sometimes still doubt that he will provide for us today. So where are you struggling right now? Where are you struggling? Is it in your uh, finances, you know, in your, uh, in your bank account, or is it in your, your family, or in those personal relationships that you have, or that addiction that you just can't seem to, to shake. And you tried. You've worked hard almost till you're blue in the face and you failed time and time and time again. Do you believe that Jesus can overcome these circumstances for you? No, is it... It's easy. We find ourselves so much like the Israelites, often grumbling, often um, missing the, uh, what God is doing. And we feel like we just need to take ownership of it. We need to do it on our own. And look, we, there is a role that we have to, to play. But first, we must believe that Jesus has power over our lives, every aspect of our life, okay? Every part of it, as well as all of creation. And so how can you turn these things over to God? Well, one, I think, is to, is to love Jesus, with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, we, I would encourage you to spend time reading through the Gospels. Now, all of Scripture is about Jesus, but the Gospels are explicitly about Him. You cannot read through the Gospels, right, and, uh, with, a, with a humble heart and not come away amazed at Jesus. Because the same promises that are recorded in here for this people at this time are many of the same promises that he has given, that he has given us. Secondly, pray for the Holy Spirit to show you the right path. You know, sometimes we think that, you know, that, that, that the way that we want to, to fix our life is not the way that 
that Jesus would do it. So we need to kind of get out of the way. We need to pray that the Holy Spirit would show us the right path. Maybe you might you know, you say, you know what, God, I, I really want this, this job. I really think this is what I, I want to do. It's going to be great for me. But, but yet because of our finite mind, we're not able to see all of the things that God sees. And, and what he does, he, he closes that door to save us from suffering that we may encounter in the future. So pray for the Holy Spirit to show you the right path. And then, lastly, you got to follow that path. And look, many times it's not going to be easy. Look, you're going to have to make some difficult decisions. Right? In the case of, of your finances, that may mean that you need to just completely reorient how you spend money. And for those that are battling addiction, it means that you're going to suffer and that as you withdraw from whatever kind of a, a, a vice that is, is taking a hold of you. You're going to maybe have to get rid of some friends. You may have to move to a different place. You, you, you're going to have to do some really, really hard things. If you have broken relations, it may mean you're going to have to have some difficult conversations that you really don't want to have, but you know you need to do it. But know this, that whatever path that you are to follow, whatever difficulty that you will encounter, you are not alone. For Jesus is with you through the power of of the Holy Spirit. Jesus does not ever send us down a road that he has not gone before us. He never puts us in a situation that he does not already know the outcome. And I love the words of Romans 8, 28, for those that love him and that we are called according to his purposes, that he will never, never leave us nor forsake us. So yes, Jesus will provide for our physical needs. But he is also Lord of all creation. And he, and he is the bread of life. We may lose everything. I love Job and and, uh, the book of Job. This is one that was in many ways a great man. And yet God allowed everything to be taken away from him, stripped of him. And yet, he never wavered in his faith. Friends told him, look, you need to abandon God and and do the bit. But he never did. And God rewarded him greatly. You see, no matter what you have, you may be a a poor person eating the the, the, the wheat and the the barley or the barley and the, and the, the pickled fish. Or maybe you're rich in the world's eyes. But we all, those in Christ, the reward we have is heaven. And it is far greater than anything we could receive here on earth. So don't set your sights too low. Don't lower the bar to get our fill of these physical things. But may we keep our focus on Jesus and look toward eternity. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that he is the Messiah? That not only did he do great miracles while he was here on earth, but he came to save and to seek the lost. You know, the Bible says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, that whoever believes, you and me, that that if we believe in him, we will not perish, but have eternal life. See, Jesus' primary purpose wasn't to to wow audiences by by multiplying bread and fish. No, it was to come to sacrifice himself, to die, so that you may not have to. He came to, to, to heal you of your sin. You see, Jesus came and he lived the perfect sinless life that you could not live. He died the, the sinner's death that you deserve, but but he defeated both sin and death by, by rising from the grave. And to, 
to be saved. It's not by by working harder or earning God's favor, but as as Jesus says in his word, it is to respond in faith, to believe in this gospel message. So are you ready to be saved? So I want you to pray uh, the prayer, something like this, that, that I'm going to pray. The words you'll find on there will be on the screen. If you're comfortable, sometimes it's helpful to verbalize these words. So pray along with me. I am a sinner, and I want to be forgiven. I believe Jesus Christ, your, your son, died for my sins and is alive right now. I turn away from my sin and now confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and receive him into my life. I ask you, Lord Jesus, to control my life and I thank you for giving me eternal life. Amen. Well, if you said this prayer and you meant it, the Bible tells us that the angels are rejoicing. And I, too, am rejoicing at the work that God has done in your life. If you would, please reach out to us. Uh, connect with us through our website at cbcmaysville.com, and then click on that Connect tab. Or you can call or text our prayer hotline. Uh, that number is 305-707-PRAY. That's 305-707-7729. Because we want to get in touch with you. We want to send you some free resources to help you to know what it means to follow Jesus and how that you can grow in your faith starting today. Well, let us continue on in worship today. What gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold my hope is only Jesus for my life is wholly bound to His oh how strange and divine I can sing all is mine yet not I but through Christ in me is dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side the Savior He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need His power is displayed. To this I hold my shepherd will defend me through the deepest valley he will lead oh the night has been won and i shall overcome yet not i but through christ I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid. For Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overcome the grave. To this I hold. My sin has been defeated, Jesus now and ever in my plea. Oh, the chains are released, 
I can sing. I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for He has said that He will bring me home. And day by day, I know He will renew me, until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to when the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory evermore to Him. When the race is complete, Still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. Well, our time has come to close today here at Church Online. Again, thank you for worshiping with us. We pray that God has blessed you through the singing, through the preaching of his word. We pray that you will take uh, how God spoke to you today and, and implement that in your life this week. As we close, just a couple of things to make a note of. Uh, today, November the 29th, begins the season of Advent, uh, the four weeks leading up to the birth of Jesus Christ. It's a great celebration that we look forward to each and every year. I want to let you know about a, a special resource that we have that we received from the a Village Church out in Texas, but it is an Advent guide uh, for you to, uh, to, to use a resource. Uh, if you have children, there are kids' activities, but um, each week, is just a, a different time for you to come together as a family to focus on the promise of God, which is His Son, Jesus Christ. You can find that in our Facebook group. If you have not yet uh, liked our Facebook group, do so. Facebook.com slash groups slash CBC Maysville. You can also find this resource on our website at cbcmaysville.com. Well, this week on Wednesday will be uh, Midweek Live, where I gather, come, and uh, discuss uh, different topics. Last week was a devotional on uh, Psalm 73. And then on Thursday at 8 o'clock is my weekly Bible study through the Word, where we go through all of Scripture looking to see how every part of the Bible points to Jesus. So take advantage of those opportunities this week. And uh, we'll let you know shortly whether uh, as to go in regards to our in-person services next week. But if you're unable to worship with us in person, we will always be right here at Church Online. God bless.